Hello LEGO fans and viewers of the internet. I'm Cam, you're watching Tech Bricks, and here's a blue LEGO model I've made. It's going to have 6 wheel steering, 6 wheel drive, 6 wheel suspension, and power, power steering. steering! The steering has feedback. This is my compensation model for never owning an 8865. So the steering and suspension parts are the same as 8865 and I figured out with the use of some newer Technic parts how to get drive to all six wheels. So instead of using geared deferentials I'm going to use deferential throttle. So I'm going to have two motors that would turn two drive axles, one for the left hand side and one for the right hand side of the model. Then I'll couple that with the steering to get the wheels to turn by the right amount. Here you can see the independent suspension on each wheel. I took care to set up the steering and suspension geometry so that they don't affect each other. I'm going to put a pneumatic air cylinder on all six wheels for steering. Now let's have a closer look at the LEGO Technic steering and suspension parts. The white parts are probably actually from an 8865 kit because they only appeared in two LEGO sets. These ones are quite worn out, they're over 30 years old, they've probably been played with a lot. Here I'm trying to demonstrate the drive and the suspension at the same time. I've set the steering angle and as I adjust the suspension, the steering isn't changing. Which is good news, because I want to drive this around on my flat kitchen floor. I've used the newer 3L Universal joints inside the steering and suspension parts and some sliding joints to allow the axles to change length. Here you can see the play between the LEGO parts, although they're made with excellent repeatability and tolerances, there's still a gap between the parts. So there's the play between the axle and the suspension, the axle and the steering, there's also a play in the caster angle, demonstrated earlier. And here is my struggle with air cylinders. So we're at about 40 PSI, and you'll see the cylinder goes all the way out, and all the way in again, and nothing in between. It doesn't want to stop. So now I'm trying to make it stop halfway. Can I move the switch there and back and make it stop halfway? And now I'm finding sweet spots on the switch to just let the air through to try and make the cylinder go slowly. But look at my thingy! The rest about 40 psi. We have slow control and we have power. 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 This is my proportional pneumatic steering servo. So now I can stop the servo, or stop the pneumatic cylinder at any position and change direction with full air pressure. The switch is only letting enough air through that's needed. It's only producing enough power to match the force needed. So as I put more force or resistance on the air cylinder, the switch will open more, letting more air through. There I'm trying to move some small increments my proportional steering. The switch works by having a 2x8 gear rack on top of that 4x14 box. So both the gear rack and the switch out of body, the box, can slide. Here I've got 30 psi at the power of my fingertips. I'm putting very little pressure on the steering wheel. Pushing on the outer switch body doesn't really do anything, although it feeds back to the steering wheel and it's turning the steering. And if I push on the gear rack, I get a very light and instant response, just like turning the steering wheel. Here I'm holding the steering wheel and I'm going to try and change the position of the steering 
by pressing on the cylinder, which is like driving over bumps or going off-road. And you can see the system's correcting itself because moving the outer switch body and keeping the gear rack still is equivalent to moving the gear rack. So it changes the amount the switch is open and it returns the switch back to its original position. That's why it's a servo. It follows its own position and gets back to the target position. And of course pushing on the gear rack is the same as turning the steering wheel. Taking that 1x4 block off there allows the two tube loops to spring open. The way the switch works is there's four loops of tubes and the gear rack will allow two to open and it will pinch the other two closed. So there's two grey air lines supplying air to either side of the switch. Two tube loops supply pressure to either side of the cylinder and the other two tube loops are opening the air to the atmosphere, letting the tube out of the contracting side of the cylinder. This type of switch is very touchy. At lower pressure, we're down to 20 psi now, it's not as responsive. And you can see the gear rack is moving more now relative to the outer switch body. Let's have a closer look. So I can overdrive the gear rack at the end of the travel pressing the tubes even more, but in between the endpoints, the gear rack really doesn't move much compared to the switch body. The outer switch body very closely follows the input from the steering wheel. So this steering wheel is doing about half a full turn, quarter of a turn, both left and right, with a 24 tooth gear, and a normal road car has about one and a half full turns on the steering wheel. So if I fit a gear with three times less teeth, like an eight tooth pinion, then the steering wheel should do about one and a half turns. And that also means much less force. In fact, that steering setup will need three times less force on the steering wheel than this current setup. So currently, this steering setup is over responsive. It's three times more responsive on the steering wheel than it needs to be. And it takes three times the effort. And now I'm going to try taking this apart on camera to roughly show you what's inside. I've got some Technic beams for cross bracing. There's an 8L axle with two Technic classic 24 tooth gears. I've used some smooth Technic beams instead of tiles to allow the switch assembly to slide. And there I'm just disconnecting the two grey inputs that's applied pressure to either side of the switches. There I've unplugged the two outlets that are open to atmosphere and the two pressure hoses from the air cylinder. So there's the switch box with six hoses. There I'm squashing the tube loops. The black Technic parts have 1x3 inverted tiles fitted to the inside. So the tubes aren't just in an open 2x2 box. It's slightly narrower and it's also slightly longer as there's some plates and tiles fitted under the ends of the gear rack. And there's the Technic beams with the tubes fitted and I've used T-pieces to wedge the tubes into the beam. The cylinder's modified, it's drilled out and it's got thin silicon oil making it very easy to operate. Thanks for watching my video. I have a Bricklink shop. Please visit my shop and support me by buying my Lego pieces. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please leave your comments below. What body shell should I make for this? What kind of vehicle can I turn it into? And most of all, how do I get the wheels going the right way? I've done something wrong with the gears. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching!